Uh, joining me now is former federal prosecutor and Fox News contributor Andrew McCarthy. Andy, thanks very much for joining us this morning. Love to get your expert Hi, uh, analysis on all of this. Yes, it's good to see you, and we want to understand this better. First, give us your reaction to the uh, to the uh, bond being cut down more than half to now 175 million. Yeah, it's really cut down by two thirds, Maria, because I think ultimately he would have had to post a bond of closer to 550 million than 454, and the reason for that is. The interest on the judgment continues to accrue at over $112,000 a day. So if he, had he posted a 454 bond, in very short order, it would have been insufficient to cover the whole judgment. So what the court did basically was slash it down to a third. I don't know that I would read into that, that, they've, that they are thinking about the merits yet. But the bond was clearly ridiculous. I actually think $175 million is ridiculous because, and you know the side of the street better than I do, Trump's wealth, for the most part, is in real estate. And it's, an awful lot of it is in New York. And it's not going to get up and go anyplace. So it's not like the attorney general had to fear that she'd have something to execute on if at some point her appeal gets upheld or the appeal yeah. gets upheld. I, I spoke with uh, Eric Trump on Sunday, and he told me that they tried to get $500 million bond, and all the insurance companies turned him down. They are talking about this being election interference. Here's Eric Trump with me Sunday. Watch this. This is New York State. This is what we're seeing. Letitia James campaigned on this promise, and now they're, they're making him do something that's not physically possible. Putting up a half a billion dollar bond, bonds that size don't exist in this country. The banks all testified Trump was the greatest borrower we've ever had. I mean, there, there was no victim. This is a crooked system with a crooked attorney general in a crooked court that literally wants to put my father out of business. And, and you know who they're actually going to hurt? They're going to hurt the thousands and thousands of employees that we have in New York State. These are janitors. These are doormen. These are you know, people that work in commercial buildings. What, what are your thoughts on the impact here, Andy? We keep hearing stories that people are losing trust in New York. They're leaving. They don't, they don't want to be, you know, targeted the way Trump is. And how does AG, um, uh, how does the AG there get away with saying that uh, Trump is being held accountable for his staggering fraud? What is the staggering fraud that she's referring to? Well, she, that's her story, and she's sticking to it. And Judge Engeron helped her at trial come up with a, a novel algorithm for figuring out, figuring out fraud in a case where there's no fraud. It, it was really remarkable, Maria. They started out asking for $250 million in disgorgement damages. They then have an 11-week trial. They prove no victims. They prove no fraud. And then she says, you know, I think my damages are $370 million. And by the time the interest got tacked on, that's how we ended up at 454. But it goes to show how arbitrary this is. And I think if I was uh, Eric Trump and the Trump family, what I'd be pointing out is they can't get a bond or weren't able to get a bond from these uh, bonding companies because th those companies don't want real estate. They think the valuations on the real estate are too subjective and fluctuate too much. And that was exactly what Trump's point was during the trial, that, you know, whether, whether or not you think he exaggerated his, his asset values, and, there, and there's some evidence of that, his point was there are sophisticated financial actors on both sides of these transactions. So what you ought to do is trust them to do their own valuations. That's the, that's the living they're in. That's the, that's the business they're in. Right. Uh, and what she did was she took a, a consumer protection statute that had never been applied in a situation where you have sophisticated financial actors on both ends of a transaction. Yeah. Uh, and she got the judge to apply it here. Unbelievable. Yeah, never been applied, unprecedented, all of these words being used when it comes to Trump. Right? It's just a different story. Kathy Hochul in New York says, oh, no, we won't do this to you. To you. No, 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 this is just about yeah. Trump. I mean, it's just extraordinary. Well, yeah, th there's no, you know, they want you to believe that, like, he's sui generis, like there's Trump law. But Trump is not the only thing that progressives hate, right? Yeah. They, get, they don't like fossil fuel companies. That's they don't like point. gun companies. They don't, yeah. 
So the thought that they're going to have this precedent on the books and they're not going to use it against everyone is just silly. That, that is a great point. No wonder people like Kevin O'Leary saying, I'm not going to do business in New York anymore. He's, right. he's out of there. Let's talk about the Georgia case, because the lawyer who exposed Fonnie Willis's improper relationship with Nathan Wade says there's no way the 2020 election interference case will proceed before November 5th. Willis claims that the case has not been delayed after months of court proceedings over her romantic relationship with the special prosecutor, Nathan Wade. Andrew, what are your, what, what are your opinions here in terms of where this goes and whether or not Trump is going to be on trial for this before the election. I don't see it. Uh, they don't even have a trial date here, and his calendar is already pretty stuffed up with the proceedings in the two federal cases and also the trial that's going to start on April 15th. They don't even have a trial date, so I don't really see that one happening. And, and with uh, Jack Smith's case, April, uh, w w where do you see that going? I know the uh, Alvin Bragg case is uh, April 15th, right? Yeah. I, I, yes. A, Alvin Bragg's April 15th. The Smith case, especially the January 6th case, the Washington case, a lot rides on what the Supreme Court does this spring in the immunity case and also in an obstruction case involving the Capitol riot defendants, because that okay. charge is central to the prosecution against Trump. Andy, it's great to get your take on all of this. We so appreciate your time this morning, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Maria.